Okay, I want to do uh, this uh, webinar is going to be on paleo and what the paleo diet is and then what I kind of call my version of the paleo diet because uh, I get a lot of confusion about this. Um, but if I had to pick one uh, diet for someone to follow to decrease inflammation, lose weight, feel better, reduce aging effects, all of those things, I would pick paleo out of the rest of them. Now, let me start with this. Any, I don't like the word diet because it's not a diet, but I'm just going to use it because that's, that's, that's what it says, right? Like paleo diet. So it's not a diet. It's a lifestyle, number one. And any of the things that I'm going to talk about today, I do 80% of the time and then 20% of the time I don't follow it. So, so I, I have an 80, 20 rule, like do bet, do your best and do great 80% of the time. And then don't worry about it 20% of the time because 20% of the time, there's going to be what I call vacation meals. There's going to be going out of town. There's going to be just birthday parties, like whatever. Put that into 20%. But if you do great 80% of the time, you're going to be healthier than 90% of people out there. And you got to understand what we eat matters. The foods that we eat matter. 99% um, of the diseases that we suffer from are linked to our diet and our lifestyle. So we're talking about heart disease, which is 85, 90% preventable based on lifestyle at least. Cancer, if you saw the, the Cancer Killers webinar, that's that's at least 85, 90% preventable based on lifestyle. Um, Alzheimer's disease, which we call type 3 diabetes, 100% related to lifestyle. Diabetes, type 2 diabetes, 100% related to lifestyle. Um, all of these things have lifestyle components and so much of it has to do with your diet. So A, this matters. B, there's plenty of diets that work, right? There's 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 nothing wrong with being a vegan. There's nothing wrong with doing paleo. There's nothing wrong with doing keto. Although I don't, I don't recommend keto long term because I don't think you get enough uh, vegetables there. But there's nothing wrong with the Mediterranean diet or Whole30 or all of these other things. So instead of me just explaining, okay, here's exactly how I eat, I'm trying to make this more like, okay, here's the program that you can stick with. Because if I just tell you, here's how Dr. Eric eats, there's there's not a ton of websites and things out there on that, but there's a lot of stuff on the paleo diet. So how I eat most closely resembles the paleo diet, which is why I'm going to talk about that tonight. Now, the reason that all of these work, even though they're different, right? Vegan doesn't do any animal products. Uh, paleo doesn't do any grains. What what they all have in common is they remove processed foods. They they're, they're, they get you out of the standard American diet, which is processed junky food, too much um, too much sugar, too many processed foods, too many bad fats. And what all of the diets that work in terms of making you healthy and helping you lose weight and everything else, um, they all just get rid of processed foods or they eliminate or restrict processed foods. So getting on one of those, first thing I say, if, if like paleo doesn't work for you, go do vegan, but do it the healthy way of doing vegan, which is eating a lot of fruits and vegetables, not just avoiding animal products. A lot of vegans and vegetarians aren't healthy at all because they don't eat very many vegetables. They just eat a lot of pasta and bread. And just because it's not an animal, they think it's healthy and it's, and it's not. So that's that's kind of my, my two cents on this thing. If you if you found something that works great, if you're looking for something that, that is fairly easy to follow and, and a lot of people stick with it, that to me is the paleo diet because it's pretty simple to stick with and it has most of the tenets that I agree with. Now, there's a couple caveats and, and things that I that I don't agree with with the paleo diet, and I'll take you through that in a few minutes, but 99% of it or 90% of it I like. So what is the paleo diet? What 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 should you avoid? What do you need to, to work with? That's what I'm going to go into here tonight. And so the, let me see if I can click through this. Yep. So if you want a little motivation, it's this is a great English proverb. Uh, don't dig your grave with a knife and fork. And that's what we're doing. We're digging our own graves with a knife and a fork. If we make these changes that I'm going to talk about tonight, you will see in research shows a decrease in body fat, a decrease in inflammation, a decrease in insulin, which has to do with diabetes and cancer, um, a decrease in um, inflammation in the arteries, which has to do with heart disease. Like the, the research bears this out. If we get rid of those processed foods from the standard American diet and we eat a way that I'm going to talk about tonight, you will be healthier and we would be a much healthier country. As you guys know, our job is to turn this from a hospital town to a true healthcare town. And part of true healthcare means being conscious of what you're eating planning it out and, and making sure that you're, you're conscious of what you're putting in your body because that's a proactive, preventative way of, uh, of staying healthy. So what we're doing right now, especially in our country, is we're living a death style. 
Okay, so this is this is the um, FDA food pyramid right here. That's a death style. And a great thing to look at is if the FDA tells you to eat it, don't eat it. Because the FDA, just hear me on this, is not looking out for your health. There's so much conflict of interest. There's so many industry, so much industry money being thrown at the FDA. The reason that they recommend so many breads is because that's a subsidized crop in the United States. Same thing with dairy, all the dairy that they recommend. There's very strong lobbies for the FDA to recommend this stuff. And by the way, a lot of the research out there is so industry funded. There was a there was a study a couple of years ago from one of the biggest uh, biggest I guess food lobbies out there, and it said. We can't find any connection between sugar and heart disease and cancer, which is ridiculous. But then you look at who put the study out. It's a, I, I can't remember the name. I don't have it in front of me, but it's a very long name that sounds very legit. It's Inst Institute for Better Nutrition or something like that. But when you dig a little bit further into it, the, the members and the people funding it are Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Hershey's, Red Bull, and those people. So obviously they're going to put out studies that are going to, that are going to, you know, shine the light on, on their products favorably, right? So you gotta watch out for conflict of interest. So that's why I'm not gonna give you a, a million different studies. I'm gonna appeal largely to common sense and to what's happening. The bottom line is what's happening is most people follow this food pyramid, whether they know it or not, that's what they do. So if you look at the bottom there, it's bread, cereal, rice, and pasta, six to 11 servings per day. That's way too much in my opinion, especially because these are not sprouted grains or anything like that. These are processed grains, junky food, Sara Lee bread, crackers, um, you know, Kellogg cereal. That's what people are eating six to 11 servings of. Those things cause inflammation. Okay, so those processed grains cause inflammation. They cause um, increase in insulin, which causes inflammation. They damage the brain, and it's absolutely been proven. There's 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 no way around it. Um, and then you know, people, you're lucky if people get three servings of, of uh, vegetables and two servings of fruit. So most people aren't even doing that. Um, and then up here, dairy is two to three servings, which you'll see in a few minutes. I don't I don't really recommend either. Um, meat and poultry up here and then fats sparingly. And I, and I think a really good way to look at the food pyramid is flip this upside down and you would have some semblance of health, which means don't eat the breads, eat more good fats, eat more meats, eat more fruits and vegetables. We're going to be in good shape as we'll take you into. So what does this set you up for? Fatigue, headaches, leaky gut, which is massive right now, disruptive sleep, memory loss and Alzheimer's disease, bloating, gas, inflammation, autoimmune disease, depression. That's what the standard American diet causes. Okay. So what do I recommend or what would I recommend? It's going to be a different food pyramid. Okay. So the, the template there would be standard versus what I call 80-20. So I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about in a minute. I, I, I'm going to make a couple alterations to this, but let's just go ahead and look at this, the, this standard paleo diet pyramid. Okay. So if you look at what's on the bottom, you're going to see, um, and really the way this should look is the meats on the bottom there are, are also lumped in with the fats. That's why it's more of that. It's not predominantly meat. That's what people don't really understand about this. It's not predominantly meat and you're eating only meat. You're eating a lot of plants, which are great, and you're eating a lot of lean meats, which is great, and you're eating fruits and berries, which are also great. You're eating a lot, all of that stuff. So it's not that you're eating 80% um, of your animal products uh, or meat down here and then 15% of vegetables and then you know 5% of of fruits and berries. It's more like um, you're eating 50% uh, or 40% meats and then probably more like 60 to 70% of vegetables and fruits. Okay. So meats and fats are going together, which is why that makes up the base of the pyramid. So it looks like, okay, you're eating more meats and fats, but a lot of it is fats. It's not just the meat and your body needs good fat. Good fat is anti-inflammatory. So if you look even below that, what's it cutting out? This is what's important. Now, the whole idea behind the paleo diet is we eat what our ancestors ate. Okay. And it's, this isn't a perfect science, but it's a, it's popular and it's a good way to look at it. Okay. It's a good jumping off point. Um, it's going to eliminate bread because bread causes inflammation. Okay. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you a couple of things in a few minutes on bread. Sugar. It's eliminating sugar and getting rid of added sugar because added sugar is absolutely killing us in our country. It's getting rid of dairy because most people do not uh, do not um, digest dairy very well. Um, no rice because rice again is a grain. So paleo is no grain. And what they're saying is our pa our ancestors were not eating grain because we couldn't they couldn't cook it. Right? They're hunter gatherers. They were they, so they, they you can't 
it's really hard to harvest and, and labor intensive to harvest wheat or harvest rice and to cook that. Like that's really hard to do. So we didn't do it. So these are things that we've added more recently in our, in our history. Um, it's getting rid of corn. It's getting rid of beans. That's one I do not agree with, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, and then it's also getting rid of potatoes. Now, this is the 80%, right? So 80% of the time you're eating like this. 20% of the time you can eat some bread. You can eat some sugar. You can eat some dairy if you want to, but that's in your 20% of your, of your meals. So hopefully that makes sense. So if you're eating five times a day, if you're eating breakfast, snack, lunch, snack, dinner. So again, breakfast, snack, lunch, snack, dinner, which, which I recommend for a lot of people. That's going to be 35 meals per week, right? So seven or five things per day times seven is 35 um, times 0.8 is going to be 28 of those meal slash snacks should follow this food pyramid. So what does that leave you with? Seven other meals slash snacks when you can eat the stuff on the bottom and don't worry about it. Okay. It doesn't mean you're doing a hundred percent paleo diet, but I'm not worried about doing a hundred percent paleo diet. If I know if I'm doing this 80% of the time, I'm going to be in good shape. So if you go out to dinner and you want a pizza, well, what does the pizza have? Pizza has bread, pizza has uh, milk or dairy. Um, it, you, you want French fries on the side, you know, and you eat a piece of cheesecake. Well, that's going to have sugar. That's fine. That's, that's your 20% or what, you know, going rogue as I call it. All right. Cause it just makes you feel like you're not deprived. If you don't want to do 20%, you don't have to, you can do a hundred percent paleo like this. You can eliminate bread, sugar, milk, rice, a hundred percent forever. I know people that do that. Um, I think most of them are very type A disciplined people. Most of us don't do that well that way. So I think most of us need a little bit of a break there. And that's what I would recommend. So, but this is the food pyramid for paleo. Now, the reason I don't recommend eliminating beans, the reason they do is they say our ancestors didn't eat a lot of beans. I'm not really as concerned about what our ancestors ate. Okay. That's, that's, I don't, I'm not strict with that. I'm, I'm more worried about what works for you and what I've seen work clinically over 20 years. And what I've seen work clinically over 20 years, a lot of people do fine with beans. You might not be one of those people. You might do beans and it causes you to get bloaty and gassy and all of that. That means you probably should be eating beans. Um, but for the rest of us, um, you can have some beans, right? So, um, a paleo meal of, um, you know, like for breakfast of eggs and some vegetables and some black beans is fine. And, and the beans actually fill you up, make you feel a little bit more full. So you're not going and binging at the, at the, uh, vending machine later on. So I, I do, I say beans are okay. That's the one thing that I would uh, argue with a little bit with the paleo diet. So if this makes sense to you, um, I'm going to show you exactly what you should be eating in a few minutes, but you're eliminating those things on the bottom and then you're eating more of this stuff towards the top. So you're eating primarily what fruits, berries, safe, starches and veggies, right? So you're eating these veggies and fruits, and then you're also eating meat, and then you're also going to be eating fats, okay? So the fats would be, and I'll, I'll take you through those in a minute, but fats would be uh, nuts and seeds are great. It would be olive oil. It would be avocados and avocado oil. It would be coconut and coconut oil. Those things are good for you, okay? And you don't have to worry about how much do I, well, okay, do I need only 100 calories of fats? It doesn't work that way. Is it, if it's approved, eat it. That's the easiest way to look at it. Okay. So here's what you can have on paleo. Um, vegetables, dark leafy greens. Great way to do it. Um, grass fed meats. I recommend grass fed rather than grain fed meat because feedlot, you know, meat that we get from the, the, the store that's not organic or grass fed. Those things are grain fed, which means you're getting the bad fats and the other junk from the grains. Um, and they're just, those animals are just not healthy. You're not getting the, the health benefits of eating the meat. So free range poultry, if you're going to buy chicken, like red bird chicken is really good. Grass fed meat is what I recommend. Wild game like buffalo is great. You can get bison, ground bison to make buffalo uh, or buffalo burgers. You can make tacos with that. Anything you use ground beef, you can use um, bison instead. Um, wild seafood. So wild caught seafood like salmon, anchovies, herrings, sardines, um, some shrimp, occasionally. That's fine. All of those things are fine. Um, and then we get into the fats here. So eggs, like whole eggs, that's got good fats in it. Avocado is great and hundred percent fine on the paleo diet. Coconut, um, is great, but no cooked potatoes. And so if you're not eating cooked potatoes, you're obviously not eating raw. So eliminating those potatoes. Again, if you want French fries, that's your 20%, right? But on your, on a regular basis, you're not eating potatoes. Um, nuts and seeds. Um, I don't agree with the no salt part. Um, but candied, I definitely do agree with. You can salt the nuts. That's all right. I recommend you do it without salt and you do them raw. 
because once you cook them and you add salt and sugar and stuff like that, they're not good for you, not as good for you. So nuts and seeds, I recommend raw. If you've got to put a little bit of salt on it, that's not that big a deal, but not, you're not eating like candied walnuts. That's not good for you because it's got the sugar, right? So that would violate, that would violate the no sugar thing. Um, herbs and spices, all you want. Uh, coconut, avocado oil for cooking, those are the two that I recommend. Coconut oil um, and avocado oil are very stable at high heat and they're very good for you. They're anti-inflammatory. You can eat fermented foods, some yogurt. Okay, so yogurt doesn't have the problem of typical milk and dairy, especially if it's, if it's good fermented yogurt um, or kefir. Then you don't have the lactose con component to it. Some people do not do well with yogurt. And if, you, if you're one of those people, then don't eat the yogurt. Um, but sauerkraut, kimchi, those things are fine. And then seasonal fruit, like whatever is in season. Um, so whatever looks good at the grocery store, um, those are going to be great as well. So that you can see all the things that you can eat. I'm going to take you through a couple of examples of these meals. In a few minutes, I'll take you through like a whole paleo day. But you can eat all of that stuff. Um, so let me see what I got here. All right, I'm going to come back to that. So let's take, uh, no, actually, I'm, I'm going I'm to go forward with that. Then I'll give you the paleo day in a minute. So this is what I call paleo made easy. There's so many paleo products that are out there. It's so much easier to do than it used to, or you, it's easier to do this than it used to be. So this is just uh, something that, some things that I do at my house um, that make this easier. So you have Birch Bender's paleo toaster waffles. You can get those at Whole Foods. They're frozen waffles, just like Eggos. Um, you can get them at Whole Foods. You can get them at, um, I think Natural Grocers has these. I get them on Amazon now because Amazon bought Whole Foods. You can get this delivered to your house in two hours now, which is crazy. Um, so I'll eat that for breakfast. I'll have two paleo waffles. I put some almond butter on there. Okay. So I put almond butter on there. I put some banana slices on there. And then I use this Lakanto maple flavored syrup sweetened with monk fruit. Okay, so there's no sugar. It's 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 keto and paleo approved here. Zero sugar, sweetened with monk fruit, which is a good alternative sweetener. This is again something you can get online. You can they definitely have this at Whole Foods and um, and Vitamin Cottage. I think maybe Sprouts. And then over here, almond thins. So instead of doing crackers or tortilla chips, right? Tortilla chips are corn, so that's a no no. Um, you can do almond thins. These are made with almond flour and sea salt. So I'll do like. Um, Almond thins with hummus or almond thins with guacamole. Those are the, those are my go-to crackers. And this is all paleo approved. Okay. So this is not that hard to do. You could totally pull this off. Um, another great thing you can do is instead of eating pasta, what I love about paleo is you can make some easy substitutions. So if you love spaghetti and meatballs, then you can do spaghetti and meatballs. And instead of doing wheat pasta, which would be a no-no on paleo, you can do um, organic zucchini noodles or zoodles, right? So you can get these at most health food stores now, or you can make your own, but this is just zucchini cut in the, in, into noodles. You can also do spaghetti squash. So if you have spaghetti and meatballs, you can just cook a spaghetti squash. You cut it in half, you just, we steam it, and then you scrape the middle out and it looks like, and tastes a whole lot like spaghetti, like, like noodles, like wheat noodles. Um, so pretty simple there. Um, I just had this today for lunch, a paleo thin wrap. So these are, they look like tortillas, all right? And they actually taste a lot like tortillas. They don't taste bad. Um, they're low in carbohydrate, um, so they're not loaded up with that stuff. It's, it's a keto and paleo approved. Um, and what I do with these is I'll make like a, a wrap. So you can make a burrito with them. I did a hummus wrap. So here's my paleo hummus wrap. I put um, hummus on there first. I use the paleo thins. I put a, like a spoonful of hummus and put that across the bottom. And then I used some chicken. Um, we bought some, uh, you can buy uh, like shredded chicken at King Supers. Uh, we bought that, organic shredded chicken. I put that in there. Uh, I also put some red peppers. I put some broccoli sprouts. I put some green onions. Um, then I put uh, lettuce or spinach on there and you're good to go. And if you want to put a little bit of a uh, little bit more flavor, you can do like... Um, olive oil and balsamic vinegar, something like that on there, and you're, and you're good to go. That's a, that's a great paleo wrap, which would be much different than doing a, all, the same ingredients on a corn tortilla or a flour tortilla because those are going to cause inflammation, right? So hopefully that gives you an idea of what you can do for lunch. Now, what a day would look like, here's what a, a couple different ideas for what you could do during the breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So the paleo waffles is an easy way to do it. Um, a lot of you do oatmeal, so you wouldn't be doing oatmeal, right? So because oatmeal has those grains, so you're not going to do that. 
Um, so instead of doing something like that, you could do, you could make your own granola, which is nuts and seeds. That's kind of a pain in the butt. If you don't want to do that, you go with eggs, right? So I do in the morning, my two breakfasts are usually those paleo waffles or eggs. And with the eggs, I'll do two eggs, um, cooked in usually, uh, organic butter. Um, that's a, another point that I was talking about. So like there's a, I'm doing a little bit of dairy, so I'm not completely getting rid of dairy, but I don't drink milk. I don't eat a lot of cheese. So a little bit of butter for my eggs isn't a big deal. Um, I actually use ghee, which is clarified butter, which is going to be much healthier for you. So I'll, I, you can do that. You can also do it in um, avocado oil. So sometimes I'll do the eggs in avocado oil, but I want to be strictly paleo. So I'm going to cook the eggs. Uh, I'm going to put like spinach, onions, and, and uh, uh, like red pepper in there. Uh, I will eat that with a, when I'm done, I'll eat that with like a scoop of salsa on it and some strawberries. So those are tip or some blueberries or whatever, or a banana. Those are typically going to be my two breakfasts that I eat. You can also do a smoothie. There's paleo smoothies. There's a ton of that out there. So if I, I do smoothies with um, almond milk, unsweetened almond milk, because I don't want to do the regular milk because I know my body doesn't do very well with cow's milk because I'm not a baby cow. Um, I'm going to do a cup of almond milk. I'm going to do um, a tablespoon of almond butter to give it a little bit of fat and calories because that holds me over more so I'm not so hungry. I'm going to put uh, a scoop of or a cup of frozen berries in there and then vanilla whey protein, the perfect protein that we have at the office. So, so that's what I do for a smoothie and that could be snack, that could be lunch, that could be whatever you want to do. So there's some good breakfast options. Um, lunch, you can do a salad. You can do the wraps that I just talked about. If you're going out to eat, it's pretty easy to do when you go out to eat. You don't want to, want to be super nitpicky, but um, you basically order um, double veggies, no starch. So if what you're going to order is like chicken and it comes with mashed potatoes and green beans, get double green beans, no mashed potatoes, and, the, and then the chicken that you have. So you got green beans and mashed, uh, green beans and chicken, which is fantastic. Um, I went to, was this today? No, yesterday I went to... Uh, went to uh, Chipotle for lunch and I got a salad there. Um, actually it was a bowl. So I got, um, I did do beans because I, I, beans for most people are fine. So I did uh, black beans. I did uh, the shredded beef and then I did, uh, what else did I do on there? Guacamole, two different types of salsa and lettuce. And then I was good to go. So again, easy way to do that for lunch. And then when you get into dinner, it's going to be we grill a lot. Sometimes we'll do um, just uh, like sauteed uh, meats. So whatever protein that you like. So you have a protein and then veggies. And then sometimes we'll do a salad as well. You can do fruit for dessert. It's really not that hard to do. So there's a ton of ton of great recipes as well that you can that you can find. Oh, I don't have it on here, but there's a, if you want to write down this website, um, Paleo Grubs, Paleo Grubs, G R U B S. They have a million recipes for paleo. Um, paleo hacks is another really good one. It's all kinds of books out there. You can make paleo cookies using almond flour, um, and unsweetened chocolate chips or not unsweetened, but sweetened with stevia chocolate chips. Um, so you can make chocolate chip cookies. You can make just about anything that you want. And there's a ton of recipes out there. There's, there's muffins, there's, you know, so many different things that you can make paleo. So you got the idea behind what I'm saying is like, you know what you're avoiding, right? So if we go back to this, you're, you're avoiding the bread, the sugar, the, the milk, rice, corn, and potatoes, you're avoiding that primarily. And look at all the things that you can eat. You can eat all of this stuff. So what you do now is you go find those recipes, go on those two websites I was telling you about, check those recipes out, print a few of them, keep some of them on your phone. Um, there's, there's, there's paleo apps, uh, you know, all kinds of stuff that's out there. It's a pretty easy way to eat. And if you do this again, you're going to reduce information, inflammation. You're going to, most people are going to lose weight. You're going to sleep better. Your digestion is going to be better and you're going to be good to go. So, um, hopefully that helps out. Um, if you, if you want to go look at the nutrition 101 webinar, uh, which we have as well, the nutrition 101 webinar gives you like how to read food labels and, and how to shop and those things. But this gives, I, I wanted to do this on paleo because I have so many, um, I have so many people ask questions about, okay, what is paleo? What does it look like? Um, so hopefully that'll make some sense. If you have any questions, you can always ask us in the office as well. Um, but let's get on our way to a, a healthier, more sane diet, get rid of that standard American diet, get rid of the processed foods and sugar and the stuff that's killing us in this country. And we can turn this hospital town into a true healthcare town.